Welcome to this Frontier Precision Tech Talk. Today, we are scanning manholes with the Trimble X9. So in this video, you can see here that we have an X9 inverted. We've got this set up over the top of a manhole using an elevator tripod. And we're gonna get to work measuring out this manhole uh, size and invert locations. You can see the picture of this manhole here as we uh, look down deep inside. We're also setting up targets and shooting those targets in with a robotic total station. You can see the SX-12 there. We could also shoot in those targets using GPS. Uh, but very simply, we're going to start our scans. It's going to initialize the scanner. Every scan is initialized and auto-leveled, even if it's inverted here. So it's going to go through a quick little process to initialize the scanner, make sure that the scanner is functioning properly, auto levels, and the calibration is completed. You can add as many posts onto that elevator tripod as you want. For this one, we're just using two about five foot sections. And then as we complete our first scan, you'll see the scan is downloaded to our tablet here running Trimble Perspective software. Then it's going to go on and take some photos as well. So right now it's taking some photos while it loads in the point cloud. So right away we can get to work and, and take a look at what we've captured, which is really nice. And once the images are captured as well, we can process those images and take a look at those. So now that we have our first scan complete, we're going to drop not drop, but lower the X9 into the manhole using our elevator tripod there. We're going to lower that down as far as it goes. The reason we did an above ground scan is so that we have some sort of reference above ground and the perspective software is going to auto register then our scan within the manhole uh, using the overlapping common data. So we're going to start another scan see that working live and it's going to load in those points just really quickly here you can see it the auto registration was skipped because it doesn't actually think the x9 was moved from station one to station two so what we're going to do here is register this in a more manual fashion and that again is just because the instrument didn't sense any movement side to side we only lowered it um, vertically. So what we're going to do here is just kind of manually move it using our registration tools here and hit the register button and that should get it into the appropriate place. So a simple 10-15 second process to get those scans matched up and registered. And then we see our error percentage of overlap and consistency there. So we have scan one and scan two. You can. Uh, double check that they are aligned properly before you even leave the field. As you can see here, we have it in 3D view and you can see the two separate scans are in fact matching. So we're going to link those together. I'm going to take a closer look at this using the limit box. So we're going to drag the edges up and just uh, size up our limit box so that we're only seeing the important information and there you go you can see scan one and scan two the positions of each scan and then now what we're going to do is we're going to shoot in our targets we made the mistake of uh, forgetting to do this after the first scan uh, so lesson learned there but we can do uh, another scan so we did a third scan um, and we're going to shoot in these targets so again we're using these black and white paddle targets that are set up around the scanner uh, we use three of them for uh, appropriate geo-referencing. Again, we have coordinates on the center of those targets using our total station. Now we're going to shoot those in with the scanner itself so that we get a nice, precise geo-referencing. So that involves just basically going into the station-based view, turning on our laser, sighting into the center of that target. You're going to see here that laser is visible on that target there. We're just going to get that laser centered directly in the center of our target.
And after doing that, we can go ahead and hit the measure button on the tablet. So we'll hit the measure button here. It's going to take a measurement and record the position of that laser. And you can see on the right we have use for georeferencing selected. We've taken a picture of the target as well for reference. And we're going to create that point. So by hitting the create point tool there on the right, we've now captured the position of that target um, as it relates to the scan. We're going to repeat that process for our other two uh, targets as well. So I'm just going to speed up this video of that process. Again, just sighting in the position of that target, measuring it, and storing that as a new uh, point in our project here in perspective. All right, now that we have all three targets uh, created, we're going to go into our menu georeferencing tool. And we're going to import a CSV file with our control points. So here's a CSV file. I'm going to open that up. It's going to read those control point positions. And we'll hit the import button. Right away, it auto matches the coordinates relative to the target positions. And you can see our residuals there on the right. The worst one being a hundredth. Um, so nice and tight um, in regards to the georeferencing. So we'll back out of this tool after applying the georeferencing. And this is now coordinately correct. It's on our coordinate system. Um, and we can relate this to the rest of our survey data. So there we go. And now we'll take a little bit closer look using our 3D view. And you can see the scans are colorized as well. Just doing one last final check on things before we export this to the office. And that completes the field work. We'll move into the office. Okay, we're back in the office and you can see I've brought my data set into Trimble Business Center. Um, we're looking at the point cloud in colorized uh, fashion. And you can see here we've got our control and we can see very easily those control targets there and the points that were captured using our measurements in the field. Um, you also have a media folder if you happened to have taken a picture of the target uh, while in the field. There's a picture there attached to the point as well. All right, so let's just kind of scope in on our manhole structure. And I'm just going to do a simple little segmentation out of this and turn it on its side. You can see there it is. Um, I'm going to switch over to a color by elevation view. They're a little bit easier to see the elevation change. And just kind of zooming in on various locations here. See the pipe at the bottom. There was some running water through uh, that pipe. So we get some noise there at the bottom where there was that water. Okay, so let's say we want to just perform some simple measurements here. Just use our measure distance tool. We can measure from any location here in the point cloud to any other location. So let's just say uh, from the rim here down to the bottom, maybe the pipe invert or something like that. So let's go. Of course, since there's water, it might be a little difficult, so you have to maybe estimate. But here, we'll just pick that spot there on the pipe. And we've got a distance of... 13.609 feet from top to bottom. If we wanted to just uh, get a point coordinate, let's say, uh, we could use a very simple tool called measure point and just pick any spot really um, that you want to get a point coordinate on. So I'll just pick this point right here. You can see there we've got our northing, easting, and elevation on that point that we could save. Put that on a point layer, something like that. 
Maybe we want to cut a little, uh, you know, maybe a cross section or something like that. You can do that very simply just by kind of selecting a portion of that. Use the, that keep in tool again. There we have a slice of uh, that structure. And again, just maybe doing a diameter measurement from one edge to another. And we get uh, about a four foot horizontal distance there. If you're someone who wants to visualize the photos that were taken, uh, we can go ahead and open up a station view and let's just pick the one that was inside the manhole. Go ahead and pick station number two there. That'll open up your station view. Um, so this is the panoramic photo that you can use for documentation, things like that. So, of course, we take this a lot further and um, select this data, export it out to something like Recap or um, Civil 3D, and do a little bit more assessment there. Uh, but as far as this video goes, that's what I wanted to show you, and hopefully that was beneficial, and we'll join us again next time.